I'm firefighter Josephine Smith. I'm in 39 Engine, up at Eastside, Manhattan. Name is Matthew Jovic. Two years on the fire department. I'm stationed in Jamaica, Queens. My name is Michael Florio. I'm stationed in Engine 214, Ladder 111. It's in Bedside, Brooklyn. Pete Gancy, captain, a UFO in Ladder 174, uh, East Flatbush, Brooklyn. I became a firefighter because seeing my dad be a firefighter, him coming home, since I was little, I absolutely loved hearing the stories. He'd come home, first thing I'd ask him, did you fight any fires today, Dad? To be a fireman for me, it's part of the family business. My father was obviously on the job. I think just watching my father as I was growing up, that lifestyle, I just always had a connection to it. It was a dream pretty much since I was in elementary school. Being a firefighter to me is probably one of the greatest things in the world. Being able to go out and help people on a daily basis for anyone that may need us and making a difference, making people smile. So it means the world, it means everything to me. I remember 9-11 literally like it was just yesterday. It's so clear and, and just the whole day. I think a lot of people, 9-11 started as a very normal day. I remember it being a very beautiful Tuesday day. So 9-11, I did report into work. I worked in 111 truck in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. I was in, I believe, second grade, normal school day. I was in elementary school. The day went as normal. I didn't even know my father had even gone to work that morning. I called home, and my mom said that my dad had been at work, that she'd just gotten off the phone with him, and they were heading down there, that he was safe and everything would be fine, that he'd give her a call later on. It was, you know, originally you knew it was a bad time. I just remember everyone being let out from school, parents picking everyone up. My mom picked me up from school, and we're driving home, and she's listening to the radio, and you could hear the, how frenetic, and you could hear that something was wrong. Even though I was 10, I knew something was wrong. I'm like, Mom, what's going on? You didn't know how bad, and then, then the buildings come down, and you realize the scope of what's going on. She said, terrorists attacked the Twin Towers. They both collapsed, and your dad's there. That car ride was maybe a two, three minute car ride, but it felt like an hour. My whole world just changed. I left work, I got home. By the time I got home, there must have been a couple hundred people in my house already. I mean, just my family, friends, everybody was at my house. I get home and pretty much for the, the next month or so, there was people at my house every day, hundreds of people, firemen and family, and friends, just in and out, you know, showing their support and praying. I would like step away, I'd go in my bedroom, cause that, nobody was in my room. Like I'd keep the door closed, I'd call my dad. I don't even know how many times I called the cell phone. Like, you know, just call, just let us know. Uh, everybody's worried. You know, we're just waiting for that phone call. I'm hearing my dad say, I'm all right, I'm okay, I'm alive. And then I just remember, okay, even if he's buried under rubble, he'll be fine. It'll be fine. For the most part, what I do remember, just a lot of support from the, the FDNY and also, you know, of course, family and friends being in the house. And then after day three, I just figured he's not coming home. And then I had to mentally just be ready for that and just know that I'm never going to see him again. He's a Marine, it's what he does, you know? Fast forward, never heard from him. Still, they never found my father. He's still missing. That's still a very open wound, because there's no closure. There's never really been closure. It really just was a horrible, horrible. I would hope that no other family ever has to go through it. To this day, you know, beginning in August, everything tightens up. We keep him alive by talking about him, knowing that he was a good firefighter, but most importantly, he was a 
good husband and a great father. So try and remember him that way. Always said to myself, like, I'm going to my dad's house. I'm going to my dad's house. And 20 years later, made it happen. And it's really, really cool. I could just imagine what, what he's thinking. You know, 20 years later, you know, they still haven't found them, but I'm still being optimistic about it. You know, they're still finding DNA. I'm waiting for that call one day. It'll happen. From August through mid-September is usually not a great time to be around me or my brother or my sister, unfortunately. Forget about mom, but uh, it's, you know, it is, it is a tough time, a tough time of year. I have a hard time looking at myself as a hero, but is my dad a hero? Yes. Me, I don't, I don't know. I look at it as I have my dream job. I love firefighting. I love the camaraderie. I love the brotherhood. I love what we do. I love fighting fires. I'm content with being a firefighter. I don't need to be called anything else.